Hallelujah. As we come to worship the Lord tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, I praise your name. I praise your name, Lord. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices unto the Lord tonight. Oh, let's magnify Jesus. Oh, I worship you all.
Hallelujah, the Lion of Judah. Hallelujah, let him roar in our souls tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you, church, there's an intensity in this world right now. There's an intensity. Hallelujah. And that just means not to worry about it. But we got to step up our intensity. Our intensity in prayer. Our intensity in worship. Our intensity in loving each other. Our intensity in loving the Lord Jesus Christ. Our intensity in witnessing to this world. Hallelujah. 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 It's going to take more. I'm sorry. It's going to take more than pew warmers. Hallelujah. we got to get active in this thing. we got to get active in this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. This thing's been going on for thousands of years. Hallelujah. It's the same experience. I want somebody to walk in here and say they're drunk. But they have been drunk. And somebody said, they're not drunk as ye suppose. Oh, but we had a drink all right. Hallelujah. Let's take another drink. Because we worship the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did your soul be happy when you got the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about a temporary happiness. Like somebody gave you a $100 bill that's already been spent. I'm talking about something that's eternal. Praise God. Something that's life changing. Something that just don't bring happiness today and, and start tomorrow and happen in the, No, joy in your soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, let's get excited about Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because I can't tell you about what's going on. I don't know what's happening. It doesn't matter. But I do know that this day, we're closer to him coming back right. than we were yesterday. Right. Right. And if he tarries tomorrow, we'll be closer tomorrow. Praise God. So we just keep on keeping on. We keep worshiping the King of Kings. Glorify the Lord of Lords. Let him be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just be on peace and say, yes, Lord. Where you want me today, God? Praise God. But right now, he wants us in this house. Worship it with all our heart, soul, mind, and body, spirit. Everything that we have belongs to him. Glory to God. Let's continue to sing unto the Lord tonight. Lord, I worship you, Jesus. All you can have my voice, God.
And whether you believe it, know it, or, or understand it or not, he's keeping us all alive. Hallelujah. He's giving us an opportunity. Hallelujah. To either get right or stay right. And I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord, for another day. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Let's thank him with our offering tonight. Ethan, if you could help us out. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Anderson, if you pray for our offering tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this day and this time to feel your presence in this house tonight. Thank you. God, we thank you for all the things that we have and all those things that you have held for our hearts. God, we ask that you overshadow the remainder of the service. Bless this offering for those that have to give and those that don't. Jesus name. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Let's continue to lift our voices unto the Lord tonight.
I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Lord, I praise your name, God. I magnify your name. I glorify your name. I worship your name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're in the presence of God today? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that the presence of God is washing over you today? Lord, I love you, Lord. I thank you, God. I worship you today. I magnify you today. Lord, you're so good, God. You're so good, God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can turn to the book of Ephesians. We're going to read from Ephesians chapter number 2. The word of God today. Ephesians chapter number 2. I was here before church today and the horns uh, came early. Brother Brad and I mentioned briefly about the curfew going on and he was joking around and he said, have to cut it short tonight. I kind of laughed and Braden piped up and he said, don't cut it short. I want to hear it all. Amen. So, Amen. I said, all right, Brother Braden. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So, uh, we're thankful for what God has done. Yes. yes. And he is doing Amen. in this world that we live in. Amen. Uh, we can look around and, and who knows Amen. what good things Amen. that God is going to bring right. out of chaos. Amen. 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 Who knows? He's a master at it. That's yes. right. That's He's right. a master at yes. it. Yes. He specializes yes. in it. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. Jesus. Thank God. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 8. Reading through verse number 10. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. For he, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Amen. I want to speak to you tonight for a little while upon the subject, the workmanship of God. Amen. The workmanship yes. of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we go to the Lord and pray together again and ask him to touch the rest of this service? Lord, we ask God for your spirit to move. We ask God for your power to touch. We ask God for the Holy Ghost to flow upon us. Lord, we ask God for your will to be done in our lives. We ask God for your presence, God, to move upon our souls. Lord, I love you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, God. I magnify your name and I glorify your name, God. I love you, I praise you, I thank you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I love you, Jesus. Let your spirit rest upon us, God. Give me words to say, God. Let me say what you want me to say. Let me do what you want me to do. Hallelujah. Lord, I give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. You may be seated. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in this. Yes. I have always appreciated the workmanship of a craftsman. Right. I really like to, I can just go stand and watch a welder do what a welder does. Mm -hmm. Or I can go stand and watch a carpenter or, or a, a backhoe operator who's just uh, seemingly that that machine is an extension of his body and, and he's so precise and does what he does so well. Craftsmanship uh, is 
another name for workmanship and and uh, I just really really enjoy and appreciate what a good craftsman can do I can make a table my wife is laughing I can make a table but the table I make would not last long probably and uh, it would it would uh, maybe not stand straight on the legs that was put underneath it and uh, and it may not look like so much but I can make a table it might last through one barbecue but I could make a table <laughs> amen but there are some people that you put a a few pieces of equipment in their hands and give them some pieces of wood that don't look like much and they can make a beautiful thing out of it and I have asked Brother Brad if he would uh, well I think I said I was going to talk about it but I'm going to ask him to talk about it. he made a table uh, that was a butcher block table. And uh, it was a thing that uh, someone specifically asked him to make and it took a lot of time and took a lot of, uh, took a lot of uh, planning. And, but it, I saw when it was almost finished and how good it looked. Tell us a little bit about how you did that, Brother Brown. I put him on the spot. I put him on the spot. Praise God, and I don't want to take over, but do what you can do. Pastor's sitting here filling my head full of a message, and I, it took a little time, and it did take a little planning, but there, there was a plan. Mm -hmm. And to be a good craftsman, there has to be a good plan. Right. Yeah. And I don't know where this message is going, Pastor. You're doing fine. You're doing I, fine. Uh, Just tell us about your butcher bluff. <laughs> How you did it? Well, it takes a little time. It takes a plan, and uh, and uh, you got to work on a little bit. You got to put some some passion into what you're doing, and you got to care about what you're doing. Okay. And you got to care about who you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. And uh, and. I don't know what else to say. I, I, God gave me a gift to, to, to be able to do those things. And I, I just try to honor him in whatever he puts in my hand. Amen. Whatever he gives me to do. And I found that if you, if you do things in your life to honor God and to honor each other and to, and to show love and to show caring and compassion to each other, that whatever God gives you and you do that, it's going to turn out all right. Amen. And uh, I'll let Pastor finish his sermon. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Put him on the spot. Amen. And what I was going to talk about a little bit was how that, that butcher block table, if I remember correctly, you had individual pieces of wood that you glued together, correct? Single pieces. Single pieces of wood that he glued together and put in vices, correct? put in clamps and clamp them together as they dried and and leveled them and and uh, what else did you do to them? Oh, Sanded no, no, them? No, 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 no. Trade secrets, Pastor. <laughs> he says trade secrets. He says trade secrets. And uh, he 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 squared it up and and he sanded it and and he put another piece in and he clamped it down and when he got finished, it was a beautiful thing. Yes, it, was. it was a beautiful thing. Yes, and I believe he made a, a table for Brother Walker and, uh, as well. Brother and Sister Walker, uh, I believe he made a table for them as well. But, uh, but it, was, it was a thing that did not happen overnight. Right. It was a thing that did not just come together and like my table would and, and uh, be done in 30 minutes and and then not maybe last 30 minutes. But uh, I'm sure that it is 
It is being used today for the purpose it was created. It was created as a beautiful thing. Right. Now, I've also asked Brother Walker if he would help us today. He told me something a long time ago about his, his work. And he said there's a, a machine or a gauge that, that he puts on pavement, I believe. When I'm going to let him tell a little bit more about it. I can't even pronounce it. Uh, pronounce the, uh, the tool. But uh, he puts it on and, and levels pavement. Let's let him tell the rest of the story. <laughs> Well, they have a machine called a profilograph. Profilograph on the horse. Profilograph is if you've ever gone down the highway and you uh, and you you're, you're bumping like this, you know that's probably a road that hasn't been profilographed. It hasn't been checked. And a lot of times, um, when you start with a with a road, we did we did one up at uh, up at the Grand Canyon, just below the um, just below uh, uh, the Glen Canyon Dam. And it was curvy and you know and it had all kinds of but when you when you start out you have a set of specifications and it tells you where to put the supers that's where the road you know if you turn if you turn left the road will kind of go up mm -hmm. so it gives you a little bank so you don't just skid off the road when it's icy or wet mm -hmm. and if you turn right it'll it, the super it's called a super the super will go up two percent three percent sometimes as much as eight percent depending on how the road is designed to be the road could be designed to be a 75 mile an hour road like an interstate, and the profilograph is gonna, depending on how sharp the turn is, depends on how high that, that road goes. But the specifications are really important. And um, as the machinery's got more sophisticated, it's a, allowed for the uh, installer to put the road down more precise uh, with uh, the specifications. And nowadays, we have a, a paving machine now that can actually, it actually gauges off, off of, uh, GPS, so it can it can go within just a, a few millimeters, or just a just less than a quarter of an inch. It'll, it can vary that much or vary that little. But then what what happens when we get all done? The scary part comes, and that's when the guy with the profilograph comes in, and he's a third party tester, and he comes in, and he runs a profilograph down, and it used to be those things were done kind of manually, and it was real it was real forgiving, but now they've got real digital. And they can get, they can tell you if you're off like a sixteenth of an inch. And so um, they try to, they try to come in and they and they check that. And you've seen places on the road, on the freeways and stuff, where they've they've actually had some blemishes in the road, and they've had to come and cut them with a, they've had to come and cut them and score them, and then they try to smooth those over. We had a place in Sonoida where granite put a road down, and and about four foot out from the bridge, it went down about six inches, and people were just, they were damaging their cars. And uh, after a few complaints, they came back out and they, they tore it out and redid it. But the profilograph helps us make sure that we keep in, in that we keep in, in, in uh, within the requirements of what the specifications and what the designer has designed for us to put in. So that's, that's what that is. Thank God for profilograph. <laughs> Amen. You might say, Pastor O'Ron, what does this have to do about Sunday night church? Come on. Well, I hope we can tie it all together all here right. a little bit. Because the Bible says that we are his workmanship. Yes. We are his workmanship. The Bible is telling us that we weren't built any old way. Right. We weren't just built any old way. We were built so that you could see that somebody put some effort in it and made some beautiful things out right, of it. We, right, were, right. we were built so that we could see that there was a design that was uh, put inside of us. And, right. and I want to preach a little while today and remind you that you were built to live for God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You were never built to live in sin. Yes, you were never built to live away yes. from God. Yes. You were never built to serve the devil. You were never built, but you were built to live for God. The workman, the workman created his workmanship in you and his craftsmanship yes. in you. Amen. You were built to live for God. Amen. Amen. And if we can talk about the preciseness of building a road and the importance of how that road 
scores on the pophilograph test. Mm -hmm. And if we can talk about building a butcher block table yeah. out of one piece of wood at a time, glued together and sanded and put in a vice and, and taken care of because the creator, the, the craftsman, uh -huh. wanted to be so careful that everything was right. right. And if we can talk about the operators on the paving crews that wanted to be everything to just be right. And if that is that important, mm -hmm. I ask you today, how important is it that you were created yes. by God's workmanship? Yes. Oh, come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. If right. a man could be that precise, if a man could do something like that that you could right. uh, measure to the 16th of an inch, I promise you today that when God put you together, He didn't build you like I would build a table, but He built you in perfection. He built you in love. He built you in righteousness. He built you in peace. He built you in holiness. You see, I need to debunk something right here and right now. The devil is trying to sell you a bill of goods of you questioning whether or not it was your purpose to live for God. It was your purpose to live for God. It was your plan to live for God. The devil has nothing to do with your creation. Come on. Come on. He had nothing to do with your creation. God created you so that you'll be finely tuned to live for God. For we are his workmanship. Yes. Yes. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Yes. Amen. Now notice we miss this part many times. Because the first part is so powerful. Mm -hmm. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus right. unto good works. Mm -hmm. And then it says which God mm. hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The Bible is saying right here yeah. that it was the plan of God. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. It was the plan of God mm -hmm. that you live for Him. Right. Yes. It was the plan of God. And then many times we've done this. I'm going to skip back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 1. And you have He quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Mm -hmm. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this right, world. According to the prince of the power of the air. Yeah. Of the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Yeah. Among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of the flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Mm. And so what is that saying? That is saying that even though that God created us as his workmanship. Come on. We took ourselves mm. down roads that he never yeah. intended for us to take. Right. Right. We took ourselves into places and activities right. that he never intended for us yeah. to be in. Yeah. And yes. we walked according to the prince of the power of the air. Yes. And uh, our conversation was in the lust of the flesh. Right. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And so God made us this way, that we were his workmanship, and we were his creation. And then we took ourselves down wrong roads, and down dark places. We took ourselves into, into situations that we never should have been in at all in the first place. But... The Bible says in verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, quicken us together with Christ. By grace, you are saved. You see, he made us. He made us that we could 
we could live for him and he made us beautiful and he made us precise and he made us all those other things that a good craftsman made us uh, that would make a, a project uh, God made us and put his craftsmanship into us but when we walked away and we walked away from him he made us such a way that it was made good enough uh, that he was not able not have to say it's a throwaway thing forget about him right, 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 but God was able to say wait a minute I put some time in them I put some effort in them I put some some, some, some love in them and God picked us up you see there are machines and there are tools and there are things that are made in our society especially as not in the past, that they were not made to withstand heavy use. They were not made to withstand uh, a, a, a long time of being used. They were made to be used for a while. They were made to be used for a while and then to be thrown away. But you see, God in His great love and His great mercy he wasn't doing it that way. But he made you that you would be able to live for God. Right, Jesus. And he made us. He made us. If we did not live for God. If we did fall into sin. Right. He made us so that we were salvageable still. Oh, oh, hallelujah. So that we were salvageable still. Yeah. So if you're here tonight. And you have thoughts in your mind. I don't know if it was God's plan for me to live for God. Look what I've done. I walked according to the course of this world. I walked according to the spirit and the prince of the power of the air. I want to tell you it's still the will of God that you live for God. It's still the will of God that you walk with God. Shake yourself and say, but God is rich in mercy. And he's going to redeem me. He's going to redeem me because he's rich in mercy. His craftsmanship of the way he made me was made in such a way <coughs> that I could be redeemed. That's right. That I could be redeemed. Mm. Because I'm still valuable in His sight. That's right. I'm still valuable Amen. in His sight. Amen. And I'm preaching today and trying to challenge you and remind you that if, that if the devil comes to you and says you don't have any value, I'm here preaching to you and preaching against that spirit saying that God has placed value in you, that he still wants you to be saved, that you can be saved still today. You have a an old classic car. Mm -hmm. From the thirties or forties or fifties. And it may be in bad shape. And it may be looking bad to the casual observer. And there may be those who don't understand the value of the car. The seats are torn, the interior is hanging. They don't understand the value. And they would say, just take it to the junkyard. Just take it and put it in the salvage yard. But for that person that understands the value of that car and he understands how that car was made and he understands that that was a car that was made not to be thrown away but made to be kept and inherited from generation to generation that person would be horrified to be thinking about throwing the car away 
because he would be saying, but it can be so good. But it can still be so good. But it can still be so beautiful. But it can still be so valuable. And I want to tell you, the devil looks at people's lives and tells God, you might as well throw them away. You might as well not deal with them anymore. You might as well not reach out to them anymore. And God says, but they're so good. They can be so good. They can be so valuable. They can be so precious. Let me pick them up again. Because you see, when I made them, I made them with craftsmanship in mind. Amen. The workmanship of God. Yes, I love to watch the workmanship of a craftsman. I could stand for a long time. I remember going to Silver Dollar City in Branson, Missouri. And I can still remember to this day a craftsman getting a, a pipe of some kind and sticking it into a red hot furnace. And I can remember watching him as he got something on the end of it and then he started to blow on the end of the pipe. And before long, he had built, he had made a beautiful piece of glass work. A beautiful piece of glass work. Why? Because the craftsman could see what I couldn't see. I could watch him work, I could appreciate him work, but I could never in my wildest imaginations see what he could see. I love to watch the craftsman. I love to watch the Lord, the master craftsman. I love to see what he does in lives. And it takes my breath away sometimes to see how the God changes lives. To see how that God moves upon yes. hearts. I've come to preach to you today. I've come to preach to you today. But God who is rich in His mercy yes. for His great love wherewith He loved us. Even when we were dead in sin have quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. By grace you are saved. Could we stand today? As I heard Brother Walker talk about the papilograph, I can't imagine the precision that has to come about, the craftsmanship that has to occur in order for that to be able to happen. But if I am amazed by that, I promise you that there is a God that has created humanity. There is a God that has created humanity. And the things that he does with precision and lives of people will take your breath away. The workmanship of God. Yes. Musicians, can you come today? The workmanship of God. The workmanship of God. He made your life beautiful. Yes. As beautiful as a more beautiful than a butcher block table could ever be. That's right. He made your life precise. More precise than that profilograph could measure more precise. And he made you to be you, to live for God, to do the will of God in your life. Amen. No one can do it like you can. No one can do the work of God just exactly like you. God made you and planned you for a work in his vineyard. Right. Let's ask God to help us right now. God, I ask God right now that you would help people to understand God. I ask 
that you would help people understand the workmanship and the craftsmanship that you have put into their lives. Lord, I ask God that you help them understand, God, that you didn't make them just any old way, that you didn't, they weren't created by accident, that they weren't created by happenstance, but that, God, you had a purpose in there for their lives. Even if you're not, they're not fulfilling your purpose right now, God. I want to pray for them, God, that they would believe that they could come to a place where they could fulfill, fulfill your purpose that you made for them. God, touch them, Lord, today. Touch them, Lord, today. Touch them, Lord, today. Praise the name of the Lord.
But I urge you, if you've been struggling with what you think your value may not be for the kingdom of God, I urge you to remember again the workmanship of God. And it's far more precise and it's far more advanced yes. than any craftsman that you've ever seen. And he's crafted it into your life. God, I thank you for this service today. I thank you, God, for your spirit that's moved upon our life. I thank you, God, for the victorious worship that we had today. I thank you, God, for the people that are here in this service today. Let your presence move up on lives. God, help us, God, as we leave this place and go into a world of turmoil. And we remember that those people, too, were created by God. They were the workmanship of God. They will have compassion upon them. Help us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank the Lord. Go with God. Live for God.